Is that a conventional or a climb cut? Video is sponsored by Masso, makers of the Masso CNC controller. Eight hardware and software package to run your machine with no PC required. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today we're going to take a quick look at climb cutting and conventional cutting. Now if you looked at that video clip at the start and said that's a conventional cut, well you were actually right. But realistically, at best, it was a guess. Unless you know I was cutting the inside or the outside of that circle, you have absolutely no way of telling whether that was climb or conventional cutting. If I was cutting the outside of the circle, it was a conventional cut, but if I was cutting the inside of the circle, it was a climb cut. The true answer is it was both, and you have absolutely no idea which it was, not without additional information. So let's take a closer look at it. So here I have a circle that I want to cut out and I've already set up a toolpath. I'm going to cut around the outside of it and I'm going to use conventional cutting. You can see the direction of the cut is anti-clockwise. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to cut on the inside of that circle but I'm going to leave it as a conventional cut. We'll just recalculate. And now we can see that the direction of cut has changed to clockwise, even though we're still doing conventional cutting. So that's why we don't use the terminology clockwise and anti-clockwise, because they mean absolutely nothing when it comes to cutting. That's why we use climb cut and conventional cut. That tells us a lot more information about the cut. Now, before I started this video, I made this little cut here. This one I did using conventional cutting, and this one I did using climb cutting. And when I look at them, I find the conventional cut to be a much nicer cut than the climb. Even though they are the same file, I just simply change the direction of the cut. And personally, I find that when machining wood materials like this here, that conventional cuts always give me a much nicer finish than a climb cut. Just listen to the sound difference between the conventional and climb cut. You'll note that the cut quality of the climb cut shown here is far worse than this, the conventional cut. Now, conventional wisdom, and certainly when I started out in this hobby and started looking up information on climb cutting and conventional cutting, and trying to get my head around it, was that climb cutting gave a much better finish than conventional cutting, and has a few other advantages as well. It actually puts a lighter load on the cutter, and has a property called chip thinning. That means that at the start of the cut, the cut it, chip is as big as it's going to get, and as it proceeds towards cutting the end of that chip, the chip will have got progressively smaller. The advantage of that is it takes the heat away from the cutter and it goes into the chip. The chip is then ejected backwards behind the cut, so there's no chance of recutting it. As a result, the cutter runs cooler, the cutter life is extended, and we're told we get a much better cut. Conventional cutting, on the other hand, has a higher load on the cutter. Your chip actually gets thicker as the cut proceeds. It starts off thin and progresses to a thicker chip. The chip is then ejected forward into the area that you wish to continue cutting, means you are in danger of recutting that chip, leading to higher te uh, cutter temperatures, shorter tool life, and a worse cut. Well, while I agree with all of it, I don't quite agree with the last of it. I find that the conventional cut gives me a much better finish than the climb cut. So next, let's have a look and see how we can identify whether we're doing a climb cut or a conventional cut. Well, fortunately, it's easy to tell. 
all cutters rotate clockwise. So if you put your cutter against the edge of the material that you're cutting there and rotate it along your cut, the direction the cutter moves in is a climb cut. So if you're rotating a cutter and it wants to move this way, but you move in the opposite direction, that is a conventional cut. You'll also notice that the flutes on this cutter, if I move it in the conventional direction, want to bite into the material and cut it. Likewise, if I move the cutter in a climb cut direction, basically the back of the cutter there just is quite happy just to run along the outside edge of the cut. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, when you're machining a slot like this one here and your cutter spans the entire width, it cuts both sides at the same time. In this particular instance, what happens is the cutter on this side here, if we're moving in this direction here, does a conventional cut, but the cutter on this side here does a climb cut. So let's just rotate the cutter along the edge here. So the natural tendency of this cutter, when I rotate it clockwise, is for it to run in this direction here. And because our direction of motion is this direction here, it's doing a conventional cut. But look at it on this side here. I'll bring the cutter across to this edge here and rotate it in a clockwise direction. And as you can see, the cutter wants to move in this direction here. And because we're cutting the slot in this direction here, this side is a climb cut. So, if your cutter is spanning the entire width of the slot you're cutting, on this side here, we're doing a conventional cut. On this side here, we're doing a climb cut. Now, there's a wise old saying about climb cutting and manual machining. What, what is it? Oh, yes. Don't do it. It's dangerous. So it's important to note that climb cutting is restricted to CNC machining only. Not even a manual mill should be used for climb cutting. Any backlash or slop in your system will be punished with tool chatter. And you also have to take into account tool deflection as well. With a thinner tool, the tendency of it is to run around the outside edge of the material, especially if you're taking a fine cut, rather than actually biting into that material and cutting it. So you end up with parts that are not correctly sized as well. Climb cutting doesn't have everything going its own way. Now here is why I think we get a worse cut when climb cutting compared to conventional cutting. So here I'm showing two cuts. One's conventional and one's a climb cut. The cutter rotates clockwise. And for the conventional cut, it's traveling in this direction. The chip will start here and it will cut its way through to there as it travels forward. So we end up with a whole series of overlapping cuts like this. And we end up with a nice smooth edge along here. Now when it comes to the climb cut, we're actually starting here and the chip gets thinner as it goes. Now this is good because that takes away the load, there's less load on it as it finishes and in theory you should get a better finish. We should just end up with a whole series of cut like this. But what happens is if we're traveling at the same speed as our conventional cut and it's a bit too fast, we can end up taking a bigger cut and it gets through to here and it doesn't quite make it all the way through before it moves as it's moving forward. It's outrunning the speed at which the cutter can rotate and because it doesn't overlap the previous cut, you end up with this small fiber between overlapping cuts. And of course, as we know, wood would by far prefer to bend out of the way than be cut. And the result, I believe, is this sort of effect here. The fibres don't get cut all the way through and gives us quite a rough cut when we're doing a climb cut. 
So when we're climb cutting, the cut should be slow, much slower than the conventional cut. And even then, I'm not sure. Because this cut is getting thinner as it goes, I think the fibers are more likely to bend out of the way than be sheared off. And this here, instant here, the cut starts shallow and gets thicker as it goes. And I think that that is more likely to cut our fibers on the wood and give us a much better finish. And that's the effect that I sort of see when I'm cutting woods. The conventional cut gives me a much nicer finish than the climb cut. And there you have it, my personal experience of climb cut versus conventional. I always find the conventional cut to be better than the climb cut. And as a result, that's basically all I ever use. But I'd like to know what your experience is. Leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know which you find better, climb or conventional cutting. All that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my website, www.cncnuts.com. And remember the golden rule. Don't manually climb cut. Cheers.